Hello, welcome to episode 79 of the Isla Paradiso Bunch. Carrots here. Our travellers today are Craig and Judy. And today we're going to complete the final tomb in this series of videos. It is under the nectary in France and it is the tomb of Jean Necro. Once we've completed this tomb and found the tomb object for the tomb, we will have finished all of the requirements for this adventuring playlist. There will be one extra video showing Craig and Judy back at home where their whole household has packed up and moved to live in Dragon Valley. They won't be going home to Isla Paradiso. This is due, of course, to the massive amount of lag and crashing that are happening with the game in Isla Paradiso. So enjoy this video. We have last saw them when they'd finished the tomb of Jean Necro's wife, Isael, and they had a little party afterwards because I won't allow them to taste the nectar when they're actually working their way through the tombs. Next morning they thought they could continue their party indefinitely. They got into the nectar early, but this is going to have to stop. We've got to get busy, we've got to get into that tomb. Craig thought you might like to see the sapphire of the crescent moon before he has to put it into that hole in the wall. So here it is. And then we're going to be busy going through the tomb of Jean Nectaro to find the signet of the French tomb of Jean Nectaro. And I think he's got to find an emerald in this one. Let's see what happens. Time for adventure has arrived and Craig and Judy set off. We'll just recap a little of the story so you know why they're doing what they're doing. The legendary gems of the pharaoh Anuk Rus. The legends list a sapphire more blue than the desert sky, a ruby redder than blood, and an emerald more green than the eyes of a cobra. Now Jean Necro fell in love with the pharaoh's daughter and the pair eloped back to France with his three gems that were meant for the pharaoh's crown and Craig's got the job of locating those three gems hundreds of years after the story happened of course. He got the ruby of Saqqara in Egypt from the sleazy relic merchant and he found the sapphire of the crescent moon in the pharaoh's daughter's tomb that was the tomb of Isael she was also the wife of Jean Nectaro and now we're going after the emerald Craig used the ruby in the hole in the wall to get into the tomb of Isael and he got the sapphire from her tomb and now he's going to use the sapphire into the hole in the wall again to try to get into the tomb of Jean Nectaro in order to find the emerald. Craig decides to get started. He takes the sapphire and sticks his hand into that hole in the wall. He feels around for a while and eventually he discovers that the sapphire fits but the hole is empty. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like much has changed this time. It will be necessary to confer with Jeannie Lambert, the nectar merchant. Oh dear. Craig quickly went up to see Jeannie Lambert, who was waiting at the nectary front desk. She's a nectar merchant after all. And he told her what he'd discovered and she said, Have you seen this necklace? Based on what you learned, I have an idea where the third gem is. History mentions that Anastasia always wore a beautiful green gem in a necklace. I believe after she died, it was eventually sold at auction. Ask a handful of sims about the auction to see what you can discover. Now Anastasia, I think, is the daughter of Jean Necro and Isael, and she was mentioned in an earlier adventure to do with the Chateau du Landgrab. Since it's very early in the morning, there weren't any spare sims wandering around the nectary. So Craig rushed into town and he's decided to speak to the various merchants. And the first merchant that he went to was the relic merchant. And the relic merchant said, Sorry, I have no idea what happened to Anastasia's necklace. That was a bit of a setback for poor Craig. So we had a bit of a think while he wandered around checking out what the relic merchant had for sale. And he quickly made up his mind that he should go and ask one of the other merchants. So he ran off outside and headed into the bookstore. He thought he'd check with the book merchant, but she was clueless as well. Poor Craig, he's having problems. Little does he know, he's always got to ask three sims, just any 
23 sims. The first two are always clueless. However, there is some hope that he may get his answer from the next sim he speaks to. So Craig headed outside again. One part of him was full of hope that he must surely get an answer soon. And another part of him was saying, What if I never find out? What if nobody remembers anything about this emerald? Then what will I do? But he had to keep trying and he ended up at the general store. He decided to ask the merchant in that store. Hopefully she'll know something. He hasn't met her before, so he needs to introduce himself and have a bit of a chat to get up a bit of a friendship or at least an acquaintanceship with her, or she won't tell him anything. So they chat about the heat. Nothing like talking about the weather. And then finally Craig has his opportunity and he asks her the big question on his mind at the moment. Do you know anything about this necklace? I really hope you do. He's been bored out of his brain talking about the weather. Hey, he's got lucky. Mmm, nectar. Yes, I remember that necklace quite well. Stunningly beautiful. I was quite young when the auction was held. I was there, actually, working as a server for the kitchen. It was Jean-Luc Beaumont who bought the emerald necklace. Jean-Luc Beaumont loves his nectar. I'd suggest you buy some excellent nectar to bring with you. And Craig has to deliver excellent nectar to Jean-Luc Beaumont to obtain the emerald of the envious hearts. Craig immediately hurried off to go see if he could find Jean-Luc Beaumont. He didn't worry about going out and buying any nectar. He'd, he's got a, an inventory full of nectar. He's just done the tomb of Israel under the nectary and he collected massive amounts of nectar. Very well aged into ancient nectar. I'm sure that Jean-Luc Beaumont would enjoy that nectar. Here he is. He has arrived. First of all, he must introduce himself and have a little boring conversation to get Jean-Luc Beaumont into the right frame of mind to be prepared to accept the nectar. Once they've introduced themselves and discussed the weather for a sufficiently long time, Jean-Luc Beaumont is delighted. Success is sweet. Thank you. This is one of my favorite nectars. You say you want the gem from my necklace? Ha! Huh. I wouldn't give it to just anyone. But if you are working to help the town, I'll gladly give it to you. I paid less for it than this bottle of nectar. So I am still profiting anyway. <laughs> you should head back to tell Jeannie Lambert of your success. Craig takes him at his word and hurries back to the nectary. And this will be the last time we see daylight for quite a while. There goes Craig on his trusty scooter through the town and back to the nectary where Jeannie Lambert is waiting for him to deliver the emerald or to come back with news as to whether he's got the emerald or not. When Craig gets there, Jeannie Lambert says, I am speechless. Well, I suppose not, as I'm blathering on like an idiot. Nevertheless, you've found the emerald. We should celebrate at once. Here, take these coins and nectar from my private stock. I insist. And Craig gets a bottle of nectar and 130 ancient coins. Opening the tomb of Nectaro. With this emerald, you will finally be able to open the door to the tomb. If this is indeed the final resting place of Jean Necro, and if what I've read is true, his final resting place contains the original recipe for nectar, rumoured to be the greatest nectar ever created. You must recover it. The recipe could revitalise the Chancellor Sims nectar industry and make it the greatest source of nectar in all the world once again. Place the emerald in the final hole to enter the tomb. Find the ancient nectar recipe and return it to Jeannie Lambert. Craig headed downstairs to put the emerald in the hole in the wall. Judy had been waiting patiently for Craig to return to that creepy room with the three holes in the wall. Behind her you could see the passageway that she found and the hidden door they opened to gain access to the tomb of Israel. And now Craig is going to put his hand in the wall again, this time with the emerald in it. And he is going to hopefully find the keystone to get into the tomb of Jean Nectaro. Opening the tomb of Nectaro. With this emerald, you will finally be able to open the door to the tomb. 
If this is indeed the final resting place of Jean Necro, and if what I've read is true, his final resting place contains the original recipe for nectar, rumoured to be the greatest nectar ever created. You must recover it. The recipe could revitalise the Chancellor Sims nectar industry and make it the greatest source of nectar in all the world once again. Place the emerald in the final hole to enter the tomb. Find the ancient nectar recipe and return it to Jeannie Lambert. Craig pulled his hand out of the hole and stood back and wondered, now what? And then he saw it. The keystone! Was that lock the lock? Oh yes, look, it is, it's sparkling. That is the lock for the keystone. We've finally found the keystone for that lock. So you'd better insert it into that Jump keyhole up. and unlock that door. Oh, thank goodness, it's done. Now they've just got to walk through the door and see what sort of issues await them. Well, Craig's found himself in a hallway, I think. There goes Judy. Yes, here it is. It's a long panelled hallway. Now, I happen to know for a fact that there is a hidden door along the wall on the right, but there was no way I could find it. It just simply didn't come up to ins the thing to inspect just never appeared. And I know that those pushable statues are not pushable, but I tried and the one on the right is. So Judy pulled it. She had to pull it a long way to be able to see what was behind it. And as usual, pushable statues are very difficult to push in this adventure. They're even more difficult to pull by the look of it. At least she's got a stone pushable statue this time. Just one more pull and we'll go and check up the back there, see what you've uncovered. Can't see anything. I wonder if something's hidden behind that railing. Let's just have a close. Oh look, there some is something up there. There's a he hearing a strange sound as well. There it is. It's a couple of children just straight above them playing catch with the ball. You better stick your hand in that hole in the wall, Judy. Craig's doing all the sticking of hands in holes and walls lately, but I think it's time Judy did one. Aha! Uh -huh. I thought there was a hidden door in that wall. But I didn't remember that you needed to put your hand in a hole in the wall to find it. It's only got some holes in the floor for her to search in. So she's going to stick a hand in them. See what she can pull out. The three of them. She just got a little relic out of that. It wasn't worth much. And a bit of low quality dried food. Wonder what's in the final hole. Just a money bag. Not worth much. Oh well, at least we got that hidden door discovered. We can move on now. And then they found they had to walk down not one, not two, but three sets of steps. There were no hidden doors anywhere along here. As a matter of fact, the wall on their left is dividing them from the tomb of Israel, which they've already completed. So there is nothing to find there. I've just got to keep going down the steps. There's Judy going down the final few steps. And they've come into this interesting looking room. I'm immediately worried about hidden fire traps and all that sort of thing and hidden doors. Searched thoroughly, couldn't find anything. So Judy proceeded along one of the hallways and Craig went along the other. So Judy proceeded along the hallway that was directly in front of them, just stopping to pick up one little treasure, a bowl, an Egyptian bowl actually. And it was worth a couple of hundred simoleons, so it was fairly well picked up. Now what's she going to find down here? Electric trap. But there's a money bag on a pedestal so she can collect that without having to go into that trap. And there's a staircase there but I won't get her to go up there just yet. Craig can investigate the other hallway. You can see there's a hidden door there that he's going to try to open. There's also a pile of ancient coins and we can see that electric trap down at the end of the hallway. Judy's waiting down the end there on the other side of that electric trap while Craig works on investigating this hidden door. So he finds the lock and unlocks it and it slowly swings open. But before going into it, he thinks he'll just go grab that pile of ancient coins he can see on the floor just near where he's standing. And now that the door's fully opened, he can go inside and see just what's in there. Is it treasure or is it some way of advancing himself through the tomb? It's a very small room and it's got a bottle of nectar on a pedestal. It's almost not worth getting into by the look of it. There's nothing else for him to do. Oh yes, there is. There is a hidden door, another hidden door, just there behind him. Now he's going to have to try to open it. 
Hopefully there's more than just a small treasure inside the next room. We want to make some progress through this tomb. While it's nice to get free nectar and treasures, it's not really helping him get through. Echo, he's unlocking it. It's opening. It's not a very big room. Oh, there's a corner there you can go around. And there's some ancient coins on the floor. So you better pick them up. Go around the corner and see what's in front of him. Nothing. A blank wall. Ah, uh, there's a hidden door in that wall. Let's hope it gets something worthwhile in this next room. It's certainly taking up a lot of extra time getting into all of these little rooms, finding all the hidden doors. He's got it. It's opening. Another little room. There's a vase on a pedestal. He's got to go collect that vase. And there's nothing else in here. Checked it all thoroughly. No more hidden doors. But there does happen to be a couple more piles of ancient coins just near the ones that he already picked up. Just missed a couple. So I can get them on the way out. So now I can just leave these three tiny little rooms that seemed to take him forever to get into. But he thought he needed to investigate it and he did get something. But he sort of feels it was a bit of a waste of time. And down the end there. So now he's on one side of those electric traps and Judy's on the other. There she is. There's a set of steps there near Craig, but it's, he can't get into it because of those electric traps. But Judy can get up the set of stairs near where she is. It's not blocked. So she can go up those steps and see what she can do. Maybe she can disable those traps. Now I've had Sims over here before and there's a problem up here that I've never solved. And I'm determined we're going to solve it this time. So there's only one of those pushable statues that she can get to. She's obviously got to pull it onto that floor switch. But behind it, there is a, another floor switch that she's got to stand on. Now there's only two ways that I know of that she could possibly get there. One is by doing a Zen port. And I've tried that plenty of times and Sims just simply can't Zen port to that spot. She can't pull the statue back any further. It's blocked by something invisible. I don't know what. So it's stuck with where it is. She can't Zen port. So the only other way I can think of for her to stand on that statue would be for me to do a cheat and just teleport her across and then teleport her back again. So what I did initially here was I thought I'll have one more go at Zen port. So I told her to meditate and she just ran off somewhere and she just went and went and went. Last time where she's standing now is where I expected her to go, which is where Sims have gone previously when I've told them to meditate at that point, but she didn't. She went all of the way out of the tomb. Look, there's a pile of ancient coins there to be picked up. She went all of the way out of the tomb and she went up into the nectary and she walked all through the nectary until she got to the lounge room where there are chairs that people can sit on, that Sims can sit on. You know, I'm not in any sort of a hurry. I'm just trying to get this thing done quickly. Just all the way through and she's keeping, there's all sort of Sims there at the moment. And now she sits in a much smaller spot than she had before. But I suppose she's probably directly above where she was standing when I told her to meditate. It's getting dark out there. So here she is meditating. Finally she was ready to Zen port but it, she just couldn't get to it. She Zen ported back into this room but not to where I needed her to go. So I thought I'll do something unusual. I will try to use that pushable statue as a sim and I'll get her to push that statue back onto the plate she's supposed to stand on. So that makes all those traps go off again. But now that has stopped the traps up the top there. But the ones down the bottom, I think. Okay, she can now try pulling it back onto that original, onto the other floor plate where the pushable statue is supposed to be and see if that one that she's supposed to stand on stays active. It does. So those traps have gone away and the ones down below. So the traps up top have gone away when she pushed the pushable statue onto the pushable statue floor plate. The one that she had to stand on, that turned off the electric traps down below. So we'll get Craig to go and pick up that pile of ancient coins. And now he can go up the steps on the other side. Judy went up the steps on this side. Craig can handle the other ones. It looks like there's a set of steps down there going into a big black hole right in the middle. And there's another big black hole above. Well, you've got to go up another set of steps there, Craig. Look at that. Just keep climbing steps. Let's see where you end up. Ah, dive well. And look at all that stuff that's all around the walls. How does he get there? Oh well, we'll try the dive well, see what happens. 
as Judy's still standing there where she, where she pulled that pushable statue. Looks like we need a heart keystone over there. It's quite a few piles of ancient coins lying around as well, but how to get there? That is the question of the moment. Swim through the tunnel. Aha! Uh -huh. So now he's calm out in the middle of that big dark space. You can take all that nectar, Craig. You better get that while you're here. We may never come back into this hole. Oh, and there's a money bag as well. And a skeleton. So many places a sim can get trapped in here. No point really in looking for hidden doors in this room because we know that there's a hallway going all around it on the outside. Had a look just in case. Use the steps, it's the only thing left for you to do other than jump back in the water. We don't necessarily want to do that just yet. And he's come up to the top. Now that is where there was all those traps that got removed when Judy pulled that statue onto that floor switch. So there's some steps you can get to there now, Craig. You couldn't have got to them before. Let's see what happens when it gets upstairs. You should be able to pick up some of those piles of ancient coins. His ears are full of water. I think we saw a heart keystone lying on the floor too. His ears are bothering him. He's got water stuck in him. I should make him change his clothes and he wouldn't be dripping wet. But if he gets stuck in a fire trap, he needs to be dripping wet. There's another pile of ancient coins just there. So he can pick them up and maybe push that statue. Oh no, look, there is a relic over there that he can go get. If he just stop having to clear his ears from all that water that he must have got in them when he went through the dive well. Maybe we should check the walls to see if there's any hidden doors. It looks like there's possibly one just there. He's going to have a look anyway to see if he can find a switch to open it. Sometimes doors are there but the sims can't open them by just feeling around for a switch anyway. That's it, he's found it. There was a door there and now it's opening for him. I wonder what's behind there. It's a light on. Very good. Looks like it's a long curving passageway. The skeleton's in here too. Let's hope he finds something worthwhile. I might look at it from above. Look at the skeleton's feet are sticking through the wall. The wall can't be very solid. Doesn't seem to be anything much in that hallway. It's quite long and wriggly. Oh, there's something on a pedestal down the end there. Looks like it might be a piece of dive well. I don't know if he really wants a piece of dive well, but he can investigate and see what else he can see once he gets around that corner. Aha! Uh -huh. Two rubble piles. Did Judy give him his axe back when she was using it earlier? He's not happy, but he... Oh, no, he hasn't got the axe. This is going to take a bit. Looks like there's some ancient coins there. And a skeleton. To get Judy to give him back his axe so that he doesn't have to use his pickaxe all the time. He needs Pangu's axe. Makes it much easier. Looks like that's all there was. And there's no other hidden doors around. It's just that other pile of rubble. Well, is it worth him even bothering with it? Considering he only got one pile of ancient coins from the other pile that took forever to clear. And well, that's done the job. What's he found? A hidden door that now he's got to try to open. Oh well. Hope it's worthwhile. The thing is, you've got to do it all because you never know until you get there if it's worthwhile or not. Found the lock and he's unlocking it and now it's going to open for him. They've all got Egyptian designs on them. treasure chest. Oh, and look, you can see the heart where he's got to put the heart kiss down if he just could find it. I think we know where it is though, don't we? We just haven't got it yet. Oh yeah, it's just some, a pile of ancient coins. No, nothing else. So now we've just got to go back down that hallway, past all the skeletons. at him across the other side there. He's got to come around and he's going to have to push this pushable statue onto the floor switch that's behind it and see what happens when he does that. He's got to get that statue out of the way so it can go across to get the heart keystone that he needs if he wants to keep going. Right, it's set up some electric traps there. Ancient coins to collect and the heart keystone. Now we can put the keystone into the lock. 
He's got his make his way back across that narrow walkway. Hope he doesn't fall off. Lucky Sims don't fall off things, thank goodness. Apparently it's because they're not that silly. There it is, use that keystone immediately and go through that door. What's he going to find on the other side? Ah, a very large area. There's a pedestal with something on it and a hidden door and a hole in the wall to put his hand in. Oh yes, there's quite a few pedestals with gems on them. You can collect all of them. Hopefully all these gems and things will come in useful when they get home. Because this is the last adventure that they're going to be on. And it's going to take a lot longer. So I'm going to let this episode continue on until the end of the tomb. Hey, look, you can see through the windows. That's from the parts of the tomb of Israel there. The living it quarters. You know what the bedroom is and all that sort of thing. Yay, he did this in the previous episode. Crystal ball cut something, probably tanzanite. So that's all of the pedestals cleared. Now he's just got to go and open that door and see what's inside it. Oh no, look, that's a treasure chest. Didn't notice that. There it is. Just some high quality food. Let's keep him from starving to death. Now he can stick his hand in that hole in the wall. Hopefully it'll open that door. But it mightn't. I say hopefully because then it'll be much quicker to get through that door than if he's got to put his hand in the hole in the wall and then open the door. Yep, it did. Look at that. The door's opening. And he's so tired. If only we can get through to that bedroom, he'd be able to go and have a sleep. And maybe... Th yeah, look, this door is going to take him through. He can go and have a sleep in that bed. And I am going to make Judy sleep at the same time. They've been friends for long enough. They should be able to share a bed, okay? They're just going to sleep in it. So this is the bed they were sleeping in in the last episode. And now they're going to use it again. But last episode, they each had to sleep individually. This time, I'm going to put Judy in here with him because she's just as tired as he is. So good night Craig and Judy, have a good sleep. And while Craig and Judy are enjoying their sleep, the train goes by off in the distance in the night. While they're sleeping, we might have a quick overview of the basements. This is the top basement. We're getting more and more clutter there, aren't we? We've had to open all of this up when we started. In the previous episode, there wasn't much here at all. The second top basement. It looks like there's still plenty to find on this level and if it's to be found it will happen in this episode and here they are sleeping their beds about in the center of the screen just above that green patch. Bottom basement. So it looks like the bottom basement and the second top basement are the two we're going to be opening up in this episode because this second bottom basement's just about fully done. That was with the tomb of Israel. Time to continue working through the tomb and Craig and Judy are about ready to wake up and there they are hopping out of bed. They've had a good sleep and now Judy can wait in this room. I'll get her to sit in a chair and Craig can come with us and he can keep going until we need Judy to help with something. They both decide to spin into their everyday outfits and get ready for the day. Craig heads out to see what he can find in the rest of the tomb. And Judy goes and sits in a comfortable chair so she can wait until she's needed. Craig heads back out through the hidden door that he discovered when he first came into the bedroom area and he has completed this room so he needs to go down the steps and see what's in the room below. Oh, that's a lot of floor switches for him to stand on. This would be on the bottom level basement. So it's a place we haven't been into before. Let's have a look at that from above. That's 49 floor switches. There's seven across and seven up and down. And there's four pushable statues. I wonder if they're giving a hint. I think I'm going to get him to stand on the floor switch where the statue's gaze intersects. So off he goes to stand on that magical square. And what's going to, he, it is the one, he did it. Look, that door got unlocked. 
But before we go through that door, there's another one on the right that's been there all the time and he hasn't gone through it yet. And I can see a rubble pile that he needs to clear. So he better go in there and clear that rubble pile. And this room, remember in the previous episode when we were doing Israel's tomb, we found rooms that we could see down from above. And by pushing the pushable statues around, we were able to open up hidden doors from below. Well, this room is directly below one of those rooms. And it's the room that was close to the bedroom and also close to that room where we had about a dozen pushable statues that had to get pushed up against the wall to find the heart keystone. Now we're benefiting from the fact that we bothered to stop and shift that pushable statue off the floor switch. He's just got two nectars that he wouldn't have otherwise had. And there's more nectars there. These are the nectar racks that go all the way up into the room above. Craig just loves to keep practicing his driving. So now I think that looks like a hidden door right next to the nectar racks there so he can go and see if he can find a hidden door and if he can then he might work out how to unlock it we'll see if he can find anything else in there knowing this tomb it's probably just going to be a few very small items but we're also looking for the signet of the tomb of Jean Nectaro and it could be in any place. We found the signet of the tomb of Israel just be hidden behind a rubble pile in an alcove. So you never know. There's some nectar there, but I think he can only taste that. We won't let him taste any nectar while he's doing a tomb. And there's a treasure chest he can open, see what's inside it. And he's got six bottles of nectar out of that treasure chest. And there's more nectar there in those other nectar racks. Can he get that? Yes, he can take that nectar. I wonder if there's another hidden door in this room. It doesn't look like it. So we've got one other door he can go through. That's the hidden door that we opened in the previous episode by pushing the pushable statue off a floor switch. So there it is there. Oh, there's still more nectar we didn't pick up. You better go get that and then go through that door that we opened in episode 78 and we were doing the, the tomb of Israel. See what's in that treasure chest. Two bottles of nectar. There's some more nectar he can take there can't find any more hidden doors in that room but there's another room he can go into now oh look there's dead grass growing in this next room check for hidden doors but I can't find any but there is a rubble pile with a sarcophagus hidden in amongst it so he's got Pangu's axe can clear that rubble pile fairly easily there's another rubble pile Let's get that one as well before we look in that sarcophagus. He might have to run away from a mummy and we don't want to lose any treasure. Leave it behind because he's frightened of dealing with a mummy. He's been cursed before. Just a bag of money. I guess it'll come in handy. Okay, now let's have a look in the sarcophagus. Oh, 10,000 lifetime happiness points. He must have found a relic that's worth quite a lot. If you keep granting their wishes to find relics of different values or different value of relics in total, you can get quite a lot of, of lifetime happiness points in these tombs. I think they're probably worth more than some of the relics. He got a drop of stone. It's worth about 230 simoleons. So it wasn't a really valuable thing, but it all adds up. And I suppose it was just that one more relic that he needed to get those points. So he's got as much of the treasure out of this set of rooms as he could find. Now he's back into the big room with all those floor switches. So now he's going to have to go through that other doorway and see what he can find through there. Well, there's a floor switch, which he needs to stand on. And fire, of course. Oh, this is a big, complicated room full of traps. So he's going to have to stand on that floor switch just to get past the fire trap. And consider those two fire traps as being a warning for what is to follow. This room needs to be approached with great care. So go on, Craig, stand on the floor switch. And there it is. The traps have been deactivated. But the whole room's gone dark and it's got a blue glow about it. This is really spooky. Be brave, Craig. Go forward into the light. 
but make sure you stay in the light don't stray away from the light it's a very faintly shining light beautiful blue but it is not very obvious just don't go into the dark places you'll be very sad if you do stray into a dark spot just follow the light on the floor don't worry about what's on the walls or the pedestals just look at where the light is on the floor sometimes it's really dim but it's you can always work out which square is the best lit the lights change as you leave the square that you've moving from so you know where you've got to go to next that's a bit confusing the path to the next square is a diagonal Craig negotiates it carefully there's probably a trap in that dark square that was right in front of him another floor switch better go stand on it <laughs> this is where you'll work out why you've had to follow all the lights and avoid the darkness the paths on a diagonal again Finally, stand on the floor switch. Look at all those electric traps that he just avoided walking on. Just barely missed a few of them, I think. Now he can safely go around and collect all the treasures that are in this huge room. There isn't much, but there's some there. And there's a set of steps he can go up as well. Most of those alcoves are empty, but there is something in a few of them. Those traps have vanished completely now. You'd never know they were ever on the floor. It's a bit of a worry that there's still a bit of blue light around. Maybe it's just highlighting things he should investigate. He's just finding money bags and ancient coins and a few not very valuable relics. There's no hidden door there. I thought there would have been, but there isn't. Considering the size of this room and the number of alcoves, there's not a lot of treasure in this room at all. Most of the alcoves are empty. It's mainly just traps and blue lights. Once you've managed that, there's not much else to do. But there is another room we can get into that runs off this one, I think. Got some ancient coins just then. Has he tried that doorway yet? I think he should go through it and just see. He can't have been through it yet because he had to go through that fire trap to get in here. I think that this is another one of those rooms that we opened up some hidden doors in from above. Yes, it is. It's the one with the two hidden doors that we opened up when we were doing the Tomb of Israel. There's a few little treasures to be found in here. It's very difficult to give you a look though because the room's so small. He's got to open this hidden door before he can get into the room though. There's two hidden doors, there's like a T section there and he's got two hidden doors, each one takes him to the same place. Well, there's another one behind him. Oh, that looks valuable. He picks it up and he finds that it is a cut opal with 813 simoleons. Probably about the best thing he's found so far. Well worth coming into this little room. The two hidden doors that are open at the bottom of the screen are the doors that were opened from the room directly above this room. And that was back in episode 78 when we were doing the Tomb of Israel. And he's found a little relic there. I think it looked like a fossilized watermelon. Won't be worth much. Much. And that was all that was in that part of the tomb. But if we go through the two doors that were opened from the room above, there's two more treasure chests that he can still get into that I'm not sure if these doors would be able to be found from this level. So he's got a sculptor's cut gem and a piece of sarcophagus, I think, from that treasure chest. And let's see, hopefully there's something really good in this treasure chest, otherwise it really wasn't much worth opening. It's just a couple of money bags. But they might be valuable money bags. Who knows? So we're finished with this room now. That's all there is to it. He can go and continue on his way up those steps that are over in the corner of the room with all the blue lights. Let's see what's up on top of those steps, Craig. Up you go. 
Oh, let's have a look. Oh, we've been in this room before. This is the room we went into where we found the sapphire in a treasure chest when we were doing the tomb of Israel. And we've come up those steps that we couldn't get to before. Oh, look, the recipe's in that sarcophagus. It's in the room below. You can just see it through the piece of broken floor. Let's get that pushable statue moved. So now I think you can push it or pull it onto a floor switch. So there it is. He's pulled it onto that floor switch and that's put out the flames. So he can go down those steps now. We couldn't do that before either. And there's even a message on the wall that we read when we were doing Israel's tomb. It said that you have to solve the problems below before you can use those steps. And now he's going to use them because he has solved problems below. And at the foot of the steps, he discovers that he's come into another one of those rooms that has got a hidden door that's already been opened while we were doing the Tomb of Israel from the room directly above this room. He's found a vase. Got to check all of the walls in this room because there could be more hidden doors than just the one that we discovered while we were doing the Tomb of Israel. That's the one we opened by pushing the pushable statue onto a floor plate. It was right at the very beginning of the Tomb of Israel. So now let's see what's behind this rubble pile. It's a pushable statue that he's got to pull away from the wall to see what might be under it or behind it. Hmm, looks like there's nothing under it. Looks like he's found another hole in the wall, something else for him to stick his hand into and hope he doesn't get covered in bugs. Eventually he finds that there's a switch in there, which he switches, and he also gets lucky and he gets a piece of pushable statue that he can pull out of the hole just for a bit of treasure little keepsake for him. It wasn't immediately obvious what had happened when he had flicked that switch, but eventually worked out that it had opened this hidden door between the barrels with the doormat in front of it. So he went through it and it led into a hallway. There's something there he can pick up. Some Greek statues too by the look of it. Apparently the ancient Greeks went through a phase where they were trying to be the best that they could be and the sculptors, as a result, ended up doing those very lifelike statues, which the Romans were very impressed by and copied. And then in the Renaissance, they were found again and dug up. And Craig suddenly made a decision. He's going through that door. And it's the room. He's completed the tomb of Jean Necro, although he's got a lot of work still to do in this huge room. And he's going to have to try to fend off a few mummies too I think. I think we'd better get Judy down here to help him and they should clear the room of treasure. Always keeping an eye out for the odd mummy or two. That looks like a cut rainbow gem and it should be quite valuable so Craig can grab it and he's got it. Might just take a look at this room from above to see what they have. Oh look at all that fire and you have to get in there by the look of it. Oh there's plenty of things to collect still. Some ancient coins and bottle of nectar. Oh, there's a mummy. I hope Craig manages to avoid him. He's coming back Craig's way. Oh good. Snuck past that one. Looks like Craig might be hungry. Mummy's thinking about death. Judy's arrived. Mummy's still got death on his mind. Gotta go and get to that sarcophagus over there. That's where... Oh, there's a fight on. Craig just got attacked by a mummy. Come on, Craig, you gotta beat this mummy. We don't want you getting cursed. And it's not gonna be much fun if you go to sleep for half an hour either. That mummy just vanished. He won the fight and just took off. There's another mummy there in the background and Craig's gone to sleep. And he's still got to get the recipe out of that other sarcophagus. Because that's the objective. He's got to get that. Oh, here's Judy. So she can start gathering up whatever she can find to gather up. Oh, there's mummy heading for Judy. Well, we've got Craig out cold on the floor. Let's not get Judy involved as well. Although she beat the last mummy that she had a fight with. I think that might have been in the previous tomb. And to collect that, that pile of ancient coins. That's very cool of you, Judy. That mummy standing be Oh no, there's going to be a fight. Judy attacked the mummy. Wow. I didn't know she was going to do that. 
I guess she didn't want to just stand there and wait to get attacked. And she was feeling confident because last time she won. And it looks like she's won this time as well. She's going to go straight to the next sarcophagus. Not even going to watch the mummy she defeated turn into a pile of cinders. She's getting the treasure out of that sarcophagus. It looks like she's got it all. I hope there's no more mummies. Plenty of fire. You've got to get through that fire somehow, Judy. Craig's on his feet. Judy's going through another sarcophagus. There is a hidden door there that he's going to try to locate. We still haven't found the signet of the tomb of Jean Nectaro either. Either because that's what we need. I mean, Craig needs to get the recipe out of that sarcophagus to complete the adventure. But I have got this thing where I've been trying to get all of the tomb objects for all of the tombs in each and all of the worlds. And the only tomb object we haven't got so far is the one for this tomb. So we've got to try to track it down. Apparently it's not easy to find. And I haven't found it yet. The other thing we haven't found yet is a star-shaped keystone. That, that treasure chest you can see in the distance. It needs... Oh look, we've got rid of that fire. Picking up the recipe killed some of that, disabled some of those fire traps. So that's good. Yes, he's going to need to go into that room now and hope he finds that tomb object, the part of the tomb collection it is. Looks like Craig's got something stuck in his right hand. I don't know what it is. No, he's just getting a money bag or two out of that one. Can't get anything out of the middle one. We need a star-shaped keystone, which we don't have. Just a couple of bowls, some cheap little relics there out of that one. So there's no signet yet. Judy's hungry. I think they're both hungry. They've got dried food on them so they can easily have something to eat. Oh, Judy's eating now. I suppose Craig must be as well. I've had some high quality dried food. Judy can go and collect that pile of ancient coins. I wonder if there's anything else in that little room with where Craig's hiding. There's a metal bar there on the floor that Judy's about to pick up. And she's better come back and get that other pile of ancient coins. There's more ancient coins down there near that door. And a treasure chest. The signet might be in there. So you can take the nectar out of that nectar rack. Well, there's a few things in this one, but nothing very interesting. Just a vase and a piece of pushable statue and a piece of sarcophagus, it looks like. And there could be some more nectar in that other nectar rack. Well, there's two nectar racks there she can empty. I think they're just about done this room now. Time to see what's through that blue door. I know they have, still have to do another sarcophagus. Just getting a few bits and pieces out of that one. Doesn't seem to be anything else left lying around. There's just Craig down the other end there. Don't like going out of this room without getting the signet because it's got to be here somewhere. Craig's got some a mortar cover to get down here. There's an alcove and there's a rubble pile he's got to smash. And he's still got to get a star-shaped keystone. The thing, the signet he wants could be in that treasure chest or it could be behind that rubble pile. No, looks like it's just a crystal ball shaped gem. It's worth a lot of simoleons but it's not what we really need. Nice to have though. So Judy's decided it's time. She's going to go through that blue door, see what's beyond. She's come into a room. The steps. Looks like the walls are not... There's no hidden doors in those walls. There's a floor switch and a hidden door and a treasure chest. We live in hope. Is the signet of Jean Necro in that treasure chest? There it is, the French signet of the tomb of Jean Nectaro. And she's got it. So that completes the Isle of Paradiso bunch adventures. They've done what they wanted to, they set out to do at the very beginning, all those episodes ago. It's opened up the door, and she's got a hallway to walk through. Oh look, she's going to come out into the room that they first came into when they started the tomb of Israel. It'll take them straight up to that creepy room with the three holes in the wall. Craig's coming out as well, given up on that star keystone by the look of it. Well, we can always come back if we find a star keystone. The thing that Craig needs to do now is report in and hand the recipe over to the nectar merchant. 
because that's what she's been wanting all along. Been working for three whole episodes and two of them extra long episodes just so she can get that recipe for the ancient nectar. I think it's the best nectar recipe the world has ever known. Rags heading up the steps out into the room with the three holes in the wall, a creepy room, and down the hallway that Judy found. And then he can just go straight up the steps to the front desk at the Nectary. That's where they had their party down the back there. Now up the steps, reporting in to the Nectar Merchant. And she is going to be a very happy little Nectar Merchant. When she sees Craig, Ginny Lambert says, Well, you look at that. It's the ancient Nectar recipe of Jean Nectaro. The flavour combinations on this, well, it's clear the man was a genius. You have my eternal gratitude and friendship, and that of the entire towns. I'm not sure I could even pay you enough, but perhaps my only bottle of original Nectaro Nectar would be a start. Craig got a bottle of Nectar, 650 ancient coins, and increased relationship with Jeannie Lambert. Well, thank you for watching. There is still some more hidden rooms to be found, but they're not a part of the tombs. And I'll start the next video off with them doing those rooms. And before they go back to Dragon Valley, where their new home is, they'll have to take a detour to Egypt because Craig managed to get himself cursed by that mummy and he'll need to go to the Sphinx to be cured. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and the previous videos in this series. If you have enjoyed them, please give them a like as that helps the channel and encourages me to do more. And if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to see more of my videos, well then subscribe and click the bell button so that you do get notified. There's one more video to come where I'll wind up and we'll go back to Dragon Valley, see their new house and the Howell household with all the toddlers and children etc in it. So bye bye for now. Thank you for watching and happy simming.